Hi everybody, I hope you all are doing great. I have seen a lot of support that you guys are doing. I really appreciate that and thanks a lot for that. Let us look at this problem statement now. You are given an integer array cost where cost of i is the cost of ith step on a staircase. Okay, we have seen the last problem which was climbing stairs. This problem seems a little bit, you know, similar to that only, right? Once you pay the cost, you can either climb one or two steps. Now it is like similar to the last problem itself. We can climb one or two steps, but cost is getting involved here. Okay. You can either start from the step with index zero or the step with index one. Return the minimum cost to reach the top floor. And according to the top floor, they are trying to say the nth floor. So let us consider a test case itself and let us go to the board. So this is the first test case they are giving us. Uh, they are basically giving us three uh, stairs and we have to calculate what is the cost to reach this top stair, right? So if they're giving us three stairs in the input now, their indexing is from zero to two, but the top stair will be on the nth index. Let us look at this. So here you can see 10, 15 and 20 are the stairs they are giving us, but they are considering the third stair as the top stair in this particular problem. Let us see as like full focus. And they have told us that we can start from 0th stair or the 1th stair. In the last problem, we had to start from the 0th stair. Here, let me list out the pointers. We can start from 0th or we can start from the 1th stair. Here, I have to, you know, pay some price in order to step, a, uh, in, in order to step on a stair. So, cost of i, I have to pay whenever I step on an i-th stair, okay? And another thing is there then that, yes, you know, we can either take one step Either I can take one step, a single step, or I can take two step, right? I can skip two steps, right? Either I can take jump of one or I can take a jump of two. Let us calculate manually without any, you know, coding getting involved as to what would be the answer for this kind of test case. Let us first start from zero. So if I start from zero, I'll have to pay 10 rupees. So yes, if I start from zero, I'll have to pay 10 rupees, definitely. And now if I go to 20, I'll have to pay 20 rupees, all right. And from 20, I'll have to take a jump of one to reach the top stair. Correct. If I take this path, you can see 10 plus 20 is 30. To reach the top stair, I'm paying 30 rupees, right? But if I do something like this from 10, I've already paid 10 because I'm standing on zero stair. From this 10, if I go to 15, I'll be paying 25. And from this 15, if I go to this top stair, I'll be paying 25 rupees only. And it is of course better than 30. So if I start from zero, we can simply see that we'll have to pay 25 uh, units or you can say uh, currency in order to reach the top stair. If I am starting from zero, right, start from zero. If I start from one -th index, let us look at this index. So if I start from one -th index, can I simply say, I'll simply do a jump of two. I can take a step two jump, right? I'll simply do a jump of two and I'll suddenly reach the top stair itself and I'll only pay 15 yes or no i'll only be paying 15 now which is better should i start from the zero stair or should i start from the one stair definitely you can see we are paying less to reach the top and the question is min cost to reach the top and as you can see here so 15 is the answer for this particular test case and i hope the problem statement is clear to everybody right so again zero to zero or one uh, we have to start this is a little bit tricky part right Cost of I, I have to pay in order to step on an i-th stair. I can either take a step of one or I can take a step of two from that i-th stair. Okay. So this is the problem statement. Let us try to derive a recursion approach for this itself. As you have seen in the previous videos, the best thing in front of an interview, if you are sitting in front of an interviewer, after explaining the problem, now, if that problem is of DP, just try to think of a recursive solution first and then only move to the memoization and then tabulation. In this way, you'll not only be impressing the interviewer because you'll, you have done so many approaches, but also it, it is a systematic approach we are following, right? If you will directly try to apply tabulation, interviewer will actually think that you have actually mugged up the problem. That is bad, my friend. So please first derive the recursion solution. So from recursion, let's say if I'm starting from zeroth index, I'm standing on zeroth index. If I'm standing on zeroth index, where index, which are the two indexes I can go? I can either go on the 1th index or I can go on the 2th index. From 1th index, where can I go? 
This is simple recursion, right? From one index, I can go from to the twoth index or I can go to the third index, right? This is in fact the third index. This is the top stair which I want to reach. Let me color it with red. This is the top stair I want to reach. All right. From the twoth stair, I can either go to the one stair, uh, sorry, uh, third stair by taking a stab of one or I can reach the fourth stair. Okay. If I reach the third stair, what is the cost to reach the top stair if I'm already standing on top stair? Tell me. If I'm already standing on the top stair, the cost is zero because I'm already standing there. No. So here from three, I'll be returning a zero because zero rupees it's got, it costs me to reach the top to the third stair. Now, now look at this fourth test case. Yeah, I have exceeded the top. Is there any way to reach the top, to reach from the fourth stair? Is there any way to reach the third stair if I keep on climbing? No, yeah. If you'll keep on climbing, how will you reach the third stair? You have to go down, right? So actually there is no way to reach the third stair from the fourth stair. So if I exceed the top, I will return infinite that it is costing me infinite rupees to reach the top, right? Is this clear to everybody? Zero when we are at the top. Of course, if I'm already standing on top, I'll not pay anything. Infinite because I've exceeded the top and there is no way to come back to top. In a way, we can say that we are paying infinite so that this case gets into right now. Look at this two. Here comes the recursive choice. So we are standing on the second stair. We know for a fact that if I'm standing on a second stair, I'll have to pay 20 rupees. But with whom should I pay? Should I pay 20 rupees after climbing a single stair or should I pay 20 rupees after climbing a stair or two? You can see, of course, I cannot reach the top here. You know, if I, you know, add 20 to this, it will be infinite plus 20. If I add 20 to this zero, it will be zero plus in, uh, 20. What is minimum? I have to return minimum cost, right? So 20 will return. What 20 will return? What will it return? It will simply return. 20 itself that 20 is the cost to reach the top if I'm starting from 20 if I'm standing on 20 is this clear to everybody here if I'm already standing on 20 I'll take a single step and I'll reach this 3 but I have to pay this 20 right because I'm standing on this 20 so I have to pay that cost so 20 is the minimum cost to reach the top from 2 okay now I have calculated that it is costing me 20 to reach the top from the second stair now one stair I'm standing on, I've already got what it costs me if I take step one or a step of one. If I take a step of two, I'll simply reach the top. I'll simply reach the top. And what is it when I reach the top? I'll return zero because it costs me zero rupees to reach the top, to reach the top from top itself, right? So, all right, this is also done. We have actually calculated the answer for one. Now, one will return what we are already standing on the one stair. If we are already standing on the one stair, what should I do? If I'm already standing on the one stair, I have to make a choice. Yeah, of course, the zero is better. And since I'm standing on one stair, I have to pay the cost for this as well. So the minimum of these two plus my cost. What is the cost I have to pay if I'm standing on uh, one stair? It is 15. So zero plus 15 is 15. So one will be returning 15. All right. Let's talk about this too. Now you can already see the overlapping problems, right? You can already see that we are again asking for the two, right? Let us do it for recursion instance. So two will be calling three and four. And since we have already discussed before, three will be returning zero because we have already on the top. Four will be returning infinite because we are exceeded the top. We have exceeded the top. Two will return. What is minimum of both of these? Zero plus the cost of standing on two, which is 20. So zero plus two will give me 20. So this will be returning 20. What will we return if we are starting on zero? Now, of course, minimum of these two values 15 plus the cost of standing on zero, which is 10. It is 10. It is 25. So can you observe this that 25 is the cost to reach the top if we are starting on zeroth index itself. Correct. And yes, my friend, this is the answer for zero. Similarly, what we are going to do, uh, we have calculated the answer for zero. Now we will make another recursion tree for one as well. Let us try to start from one. And there you can, of course, uh, like, you know, observe yourself that this kind of tree will form, right? This kind of same tree will form there, right? Let us uh, make a recursive diagram for uh, one as well. If you are starting on one, so one will be calling. If I take a step of one, I'll reach two. If I take a step of two, I'll reach three. If I take a step of one, I'll reach three. If I take a step of two, I'll reach four. From three, we definitely know zero will be returned. For From four, we definitely know infinite would be returned. From two, now I'm standing on two. I have to select 
should i take a step of one should i take a step of two definitely step of one is giving me minimum result so i'll take a step of one plus the cost of standing on two which is 20 i'll return 20. this three three we are already on the top right so from three we always return zero so you can see here one will choose who is minimum zero is the minimum and what is the cost of standing on one instead is 15. so one will return what it will return 15 the cost of standing on itself plus zero which is from this three i'll return 15. you can see what is the minimum value of both of these and we can simply derive the solution that yes uh, 15 will be the solution for this problem and of course we are doing two recursion calls first for zero then for one and this is obvious solving this problem i think recursion is pretty easy to everybody it is similar to climbing stairs itself it's just that in climbing stairs you are starting from the nth stair here we are going from zero to nth stair right so let us quickly see the recursive code and then we will move on with memoization itself so we are back on the code itself so let us quickly write the recursive code for what we are trying to achieve right so of course you know let us quickly write the recursive solution itself recur integer cost is containing the costs and integer i is the ith index i'm standing on right as you can see here i is the ith index i'm standing on and i have to reach the nth index itself right so you know if i if you want me to write the pseudo code we can do that as well first so pseudo code would be simply you know recur function would be there cost array i will be there correct if i reach what will the base cases base cases will be if i reach if i is equal equal to what cost dot length it i will return you know when we were reaching three i will return zero exactly if we somehow exceed cost dot length the test case for four yeah look at this four we were exceeding the length of this array right so cost dot length i will return what i will return infinite correct let me bring it here i think it is coming behind right so i'll write infinite here now if you know this is not the case this is not the scenario if i am correct i am and i am in the bound itself i have to make two choices first i will make an integer called i plus one let me you know write it in a straight form so integer i plus one will be recur for cost area i'll pass as it is and i plus one i'll pass for the i plus one i'll have the faith that this will give me the answer integer i plus two is, is what recur for cost of i plus two correct recurring for cost of i plus two and as an ith person look at this two what was this two selecting who is giving me minimum is i plus one -th recursion call giving me minimum or who is i plus two -th recursion call giving me minimum definitely whatever is minimum i will add that to my cost cost of i and then i will return that look at the zero zero is selecting 15 as the minimum of both these things and the cost of standing on zero is also 10 so i will simply return what return minimum of i plus 1 comma i plus 2 plus my cost cost of i and this is the recursive uh, pseudo code itself right let us quickly code this out as well and then move to memoization so i is there base cases are what if i somehow reaches cost dot length i'm already on the top i will return zero i'm already on top if i is equal, equal to cost of what is greater than sorry i is greater than cost dot length i is greater than cost dot length i will return what i will return infinite right instead of infinite i'll be you no know, returning this kind of thing or we can take infinite as well integer dot max value correct okay all right i have exceeded that's why i am writing integer max value here all right let me you know make it here i have exceeded you know recursion is the only thing you know which which help which helps you in dp only and you know these concepts are getting revised for you right recursive context concepts are also getting revised so i is equal to cost dot length i is greater than cost dot length now if i'm a normal test case i'll either make a call for i plus one stair and i'll see that what is the cost to reach the top from the i plus one stair this line is very important i am checking what is the cost to reach the top from the i plus one stair recur for cost of i plus one stair integer i plus two at stair this is the cost to reach the top from i plus two at stair recur for cost of i plus two at stair and what else do am i supposed to do 
वट विल सेम टू डू ध्यान से देखो यार देखो सो रिटर्न देखो I have to return the math dot min of i plus one comma i plus two plus the cost of the ith state. That is the recurrence itself. Now uh, I want to return as result, and you know, of course, we can start from zero or one itself. So math dot min of if I start from zero, it will be cost comma zero index. If I start from one, it will be recur for cost comma one index. right and this will be the recursive code for this uh, problem let us try to run this and see if it works yes this is working just fine right so this is the recursive code for this problem and let us look at quickly memoization solution for this problem itself right now if you are following the videos like previous videos we are doing memoization is nothing but remembering what we have already an calculated answer for right so uh, look at here From this zero, I'm look at this two. We are one is trying to get the answer for two. It is returning twenty. Here zero is also trying to get the answer from two. It is also returning twenty. So can I simply say that these are the repetitive calls which are doing the repetitive work? This is an unnecessary work, right? And you can see yourself here. These calls, these two calls which I'm making here. I'm first, you know, one's work is happening here as well. Then one's work is happening here as well. You know, these are repetitive calls. So what do we do in memoization? I Take a array or some kind, some that kind of a data structure, and I will simply do what? I will simply create that array and try to remember the stuff in that array. And if I am already having answer to that particular parameter in recursion call, I'll simply return that from the DP itself, right? So it you might have a doubt that what kind of array we should make? Should we make a two D array? Should we make a deep? Uh, should we make a two D DP? Should we make a one D DP? Here, the number of parameters. How many numbers of parameters are changing every with every call? You can see only i is changing. So there is a single parameter which is changing with every recursion call. Yes, it is i plus one, i plus two. It is a small trick. Yeah, if a single parameter is changing, you will simply say that only one dimension will be there in the recursion itself. Is this clear to everybody? If a single parameter changes, only one direction is there. Two parameters are changing. Two dimensions will be there, and there will be questions will where three parameters will also be changing. Then we will make three D D P, right? And it is not very difficult, very easy. No, it's my problem. Only thing is, let us quickly look at the memoization, uh, you know, recursion tree itself, and then we'll move to the memoization code itself quickly. Okay? So I am having these stairs with me. So what am I supposed to do? This these stairs are fine. Okay. I'll start making a recursive call, but of course I'll take a one D array because one parameter is changing, and that array will be of length. That array will be of length three itself, right? We don't need to consider for this particular test case because always we return zero. I'll take a array of length three itself, zero, one, two. These are the only indexing. I'll not take an extra index for the you know third index itself, right? So zero, one, two. Initially at every place I'll be having minus one, let's say, denoting that I have not calculated the answer for this test case. Full focus. The answer, see. I'll start the call from zero. Let us start from zero. Do I already have the answer for zero? No, because minus one is there. What will I do? I will try to calculate the answer for zero. Zero will call for one and call for two. One. Am I already having answer for one? No. I'll do what? I'll call for two and I'll call for three. Two. Am I already having an answer for two? No. I'll call for three. I'll call for four. Look at this three. Here three is a base case. So whenever there is a base case, I'll return zero if I have reached the top itself. Cost dot length. If I have reached, so it is zero. If I have exceeded cost dot length, then I will ret return inf infinite. What will this two return? This two will simply return what? Zero plus the cost of standing on zero. The cost of standing on zero is twenty. But before returning this zero plus twenty, I have to save this here itself. So zero plus twenty is twenty. And after saving, now I will return this twenty to one. Now this twenty has been returned to one. We are standing on one. One has got the answer for twenty. If I go on three, there is a base case. So base case directly we will return zero because cost dot length we have reached the top. So there is no there is zero cost to reach the top from the top itself. So we are returning zero from here. One has to decide its own answer. What is the minimum out of both of these? Zero plus the cost of standing on one, which is fifteen. Before returning zero plus fifteen, I will first save it. Now you might be getting a hang of memoization, right? What we are actually doing. so we are just remembering the solution and then we are saving 
it for later use right so 15 gets returned from here of course 0 plus 15 is 15 0 will call for 2 and now here the magical optimization of dynamic programming comes into picture we are calling again for 2 have we already calculated the answer for 2 yes my friend we have so I say we will not draw another recursion tree we will not make extra calls I'll simply return I'll simply find out that yes minus 1 is not there this means some other value is there if some other value is there I'll say that yes 20 is something which is already calculated at 2 index so 20 is returned from 2 index and 0 is 0 now has to decide its own answer what is the minimum of both of these values it is 15 plus the cost of standing on 0 is 10 but before running it will save 15 plus 10 so what will 0 save 15 plus 10 is 15 plus 10 is comment 25 correct 15 plus 10 25 and now it will return 25 and we can you can simply see we are having this dp array now I can simply return I don't have to make another call for one right or even if I make another call for one it will simply return 15 it will not make any other recursive calls right so this is actually memoization itself and the steps are pretty clear for memoization before entering before calculating the result first step is check if you are having the answer already check if you are having the answer already second step is what before returning the result remember the result for future remember the result for future remember the result for future okay so let us quickly implement the memoization code as well so how do we do memoization code i'll actually you know write public same code as recursion itself so public integer memo i'll call this function and integer cost i'll pass integer i i'll pass now i'll also pass integer dp because this array will be remembering the answers correct dp bhi ho gaya now since i've got the answer for dp i have to now simply copy paste this code and now i have to implement memoization so what was the first step check if i'm already having answer if dp of i is not equal to minus one because default we are taking that minus one okay of course default when you initialize an array in java it makes it of zero 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 but we will fill it with minus one so that we know that you know uh we are we have not calculated the answer for them and why are we taking minus one here why are we not taking zero as the default value because you know cost of ith can be zero as well so you cannot treat zero as a default value so dp of i is not equal to minus one so i'll return dp of i itself right i'll simply return dp of i itself and now from here before returning i will remember the answer dp of i is equal to first this and then i will return dp of i itself right or you can say then I will return this answer itself. Right. This is how we are going to implement memoization after tabulation uh, after, after this recursion. So remember and then of course in the recursion calls the name will change it will be memo function and of course memo function is having dp here, here as a parameter. Right. Let us call this memo function here instead of recursion uh, no this recursion function. So I'll rename these arrays as memo and of course I'll pass dp here. I'll have to make dp array. Let's make dp array now. Integer array dp is equal to new integer of length cost dot length. Right. And arrays dot fill dp with minus one. So this particular thing will do what? This line will fill every index with minus one in the dp array. Let us try to run this code and see if it works. Okay. So yes, it is getting, uh, it is running. Let's try to submit it. And I hope that it gets submitted as well. Yes, it is getting submitted as well. So now we have to convert memoization to tabulation. We got recursion, we got memoization. Now we have to convert memoization to tabulation. And I would suggest you, if I have, if you have, you know, uh, solved the previous videos, if I have done the previous video, then also just don't try to apply the trick yourself till now. Abhi mat karna. Don't try to apply the trick just now, you know, in from the next question onwards or next to next question onwards you can definitely try but these three questions are you know pretty easy questions and i am trying to get that trick in your head these tricks of converting recursion to memoization memoization tabulation so don't force yourself on typing i told in the introduction lecture itself that you know you have to watch the whole video first and then you have to try to implement all this stuff right and my friend it will be very hard for you to do do that as well so just watch the whole lecture and then try to implement stuff yourself. Those who are implemented, uh, implementing along with me explaining, yeah, you are just extending the video duration for yourself. Yeah. So let us move forward and let us look at the tabulation approach to solve this problem. Now talking about the tabulation approach, we can definitely see here 
that if I'm standing on this particular index, you know, in, in uh, you know, memoization, we were building answer from zero. In tabulation, we'll be building answer from the last index, from the base case, right? That's what we do in tabulation, right? We are going opposite direction in the memoization. So we are building from the base case, right? So what we are going, going to do here, base case was cos dot length itself. So of course, zero and infinite would be the answers for cos dot length and you know, exceeding that value, right? So if I want to calculate the answer for this two, it will be min of these two values plus 20. So I'll simply write 20 here because zero plus 20 is 20 itself. If I want to calculate the cost to reach the top from one index, I'll write minimum of these two values plus 15. Of course, zero plus 15, I'll write here. I'll simply write here 15. If I want to reach top from here, I'll write minimum of these two values, 15 and 20 plus 10. It is what? It is 25. Exactly. Right. So this is how tabulation we are actually going to do. But of course, I'll not directly, you know, implement tabulation because that is not we are that is not learning, right? You know, trying to implement tabulation directly, but because that is not very intuitive when you first see the problem. So first you always implement recursion, then memoization, then we are going to convert memoization to tabulation and remember those steps which I taught you all how do we convert memoization to tabulation I'll not be showing those steps here again on the board we'll have to remember those steps together okay let us remember those steps together and implement and convert memoization to tabulation itself so here we are in the code itself and I want to convert memoization to tabulation so of course uh, I'll write a function public in deep uh, of course uh, tabulation and here, what will I pass? I'll pass an integer array cost and I'll pass an integer array DP. These are the two arrays I'll pass as it is. I'll of course not take I parameter because now we are going to use a take use a loop here itself. How many loops should be there? Should I write a single for loop? Should I write nested for loops? Again, the answer is how many parameters are changing in the recursion? Only one. If a single parameter is changing in the re re recursion, you will only take one single parameter, one single loop. So the loop will go from the base case all the way to zero. So from where will this loop start for integer i is equal to what cos dot length here. I can definitely start the loop from cos dot length, but I will start it from cos dot length minus one. I greater than equal to zero i minus minus because if I want to, you know, if I'll start, if I'll be starting this from cos dot length now, then, you know, I'll have to take some extra things in DP as well. I'm avoiding that you can, of course, take extra indexes in DP. But yes, let us look at this itself and let us try to analyze it. We have started the loop from the last possible case to the zero itself. Now in uh, tab uh, memoization, what do we do? We'll, I'll simply copy paste this code of memoization here. I've simply copy pasted it. Okay. Copy paste kar diya. All right. Now what? Now what? 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 What are we supposed to do? So tabulation, what do we of course, first ignore these two lines of code. I will simply comment them for now. Okay. The first step is wherever return is written, you have to convert it to continue, right? So these two places I am having return, but these are exceeding cases. These are the cases which are exceeding the array bounds, right? So I'll comment them for now, right? And of course, this is a case where, you know, we are calculating the answer. And of course, I can simply remove this case because what, what, how do we remove return instead of return? We write continue. And if we are returning a value, we will save that into DP. We are already saving that into DP here. So I'll simply remove it from it. Okay. I'll simply, simply remove this line. All the return statements are gone if, except this one. This statement is for memoization call. So this is another step. I will return the memoization calls, right? So what are the steps I've returned? I've removed all the return statements. I've switched them with continue and I have done what I have also remove the memoization statement. Both the statements are gone. Now, wherever I have written, I'm calling the recursion call. This is the next step. Wherever I am calling the recursion, I will convert them into, convert them into DP calls, right? I'll be calling DP array here. So I'll do what? DP of I plus one will be called because I plus one parameter I'm passing here. Here, I will call on this line I plus two. So DP of I plus two will be called because I plus two I'm passing here. Is this clear to everybody? But still, there is something missing in this whole thing. Here, we have still not handled these cases, right? If i is getting exceeded, if i is getting equal to cos dot length or it is getting exceeded, here, where can this get exceed, right? It can exceed here. 
right and it can exceed here as well because from index i we are trying to access index i plus 1 and index i plus 2 that can lead to area out of bounds right so let us understand how we are going to handle it but before understanding that we have to understand what are ternary operators let us look at ternary operators quickly so in language like java we are having this facility of ternary operators what we are actually having is that for example i want to return a value integer x i have to keep a value x but conditionally due to some condition so i will write expression here here i will write what here i will write a boolean right i will write a boolean expression here a and b something like that you know if a is greater than 10 if this parameter is 2 then i will write question mark and then a colon look at this here i have to write a boolean here i have to write the return value if this boolean is true is true i have to write here a return value if this boolean is false is false so boolean value question mark is true colon is false right this is the ternary operator so let's say if a is greater than 10 i'll return 10 from here and else i'll return you can say 9 from here right so if i take a is equal to 11 right definitely this will come out to be greater than 10 and x me kaise ho jayega according to this boolean expression it is true yes i'll save 11 in x i'll i'll be saving 11 in x because x is a is greater than 10 if a somehow becomes less than 10 or you can say equal to 10 or let's say a is 5 is a greater than 10 no i'll simply jump to the is false and we will return this thing to the x itself and these are the ternary operators very concisely i have you know explained this if someone is having any doubts we can of course discuss ternary operators lambda op or functions you know all these kinds of stuff in some separate video as well so do tell me in the comment section do you want a video on this or not okay so let us move and continue with the tabulation approach itself so we are on the tabulation approach and we have to check this dp of i plus 1 if it is in bounds or not now if i plus 1 is equal equal to cost dot length it will be definitely out of bounds and when i plus 1 is cost dot length can i say i'll return 0 from that index right whenever i is cost dot length i'll return 0 now i plus 1 this person is trying to access the answer for i plus 1 index would be 0 and else i will return dp of i plus 1 correct correct this i plus 2 is a little bit tricky right what i'll do here i'll simply write something like this only and now i will check now if no i plus 2 i plus 2th index can be equal to cost dot length correct and if something is equal to cost dot length ip2 will become what zero if i plus 2th index becomes equal to cost dot length ip2 becomes zero else if i plus 2th index can go greater than cost dot length as well my friend look at this particular test case if i see you if i make you see this test case if i'm standing on this index and i'm trying to access i plus 2th index i'll be exceeding the error itself right and if i plus 2 is exceeding the cost dot length 3 is the cost dot length if i am exceeding this can i simply say that i'll be having an infinity there so ip2 will become what if i plus 2 is exceeding cost dot length ip2 will become what integer dot max value else if that is in the bounds so i'll ip2 will simply become what dp of i plus 2 right so just analyze these cases i plus 1 we are calculating i plus 1 can only go equal to cost dot length of course if you're standing on the last index as well if i'm only accessing the next value you know that will be only equal to cost dot length as well we don't have to check write a check for exceeding here there but when we're trying to access the i plus 2th index i have to check write a check for exceeding the limits as well right and if we are in the bounds then we are okay and it is fine in the end what what am i supposed to return i can start from 0th index or i can start from 1th index i will simply return math dot min of dp of 0 comma dp of 1 correct and this is the tabulation approach completely i'll simply uh, you know of course ls dot fill minus 1 we can do we cannot do in tabulation i'll simply write return tabulation i'll pass cost i'll pass dp and this will be the code for tabulation itself let us try to run this code quickly and see if it is working i hope you all are enjoying these lectures and if you are doing so please like like and subscribe the channel and please show some support it I really appreciate that and yes tabulation is indeed getting accepted and it is working we can further improve uh, the you know space optimization can be done on this problem 
बट यू नो वॉट आई विल डू दिस टाइम इज दैट आई लीव इट अप टू यू द स्पेस ऑप्टिमाइजेशन पार्ट फॉर दिस राइट डेफिनेटली इफ यू विल फेस एनी प्रॉब्लम वी कैन डिस्कस बट आई एनकरेज दैट स्लोली एंड स्टडीडली यू शुड स्टार्ट बिल्डिंग योर ओन थिंग्स आई ऑफकोर्स प्रोवाइड द कोड टू स्पेस ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑन गिटअप रिपोजिटरी द लेकिन इज इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बट आई वुड इंसिस्ट दैट यू राइट द स्पेस ऑप्टिमाइजेशन कोड बाय योर सेल्फ इट इज सिमिलर टू क्लाइंबिंग स्टेज इट सेल्फ दैट्स वाई आई एम रिफ्रेनिंग टू एक्सप्लेन अगेन एंड अगेन बट यू कैन डेफिनेटली ट्राई योर आउट बाय योर सेल्फ इफ यू आर फेलिंग आई विल प्रोवाइड द कंप्लीटली कमेंटेड कोड फॉर स्पेस ऑप्टिमाइजेशन इन द गिटअप डिस्क्रिप्शन एज वेल आई होप यू एंजॉय द लेक्चर एंड दिस वॉज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ मिन कॉस्ट क्लाइंबिंग स्टेयर्स लेक्चर्स आर कमिंग डेली एंड यू नो एवरी डे एट पी एम विल बी रिसीविंग लेक्चर्स सो थैंक्स फॉर एवरीबडी फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन इफ यू आर एंजॉइंग द वीडियोज प्लीज सपोर्ट द चैनल एंड शेयर इट एज मच एज पॉसिबल विद योर फ्रेंड्स विद योर पेयर्स एंड येस सो आई होप यू एंजॉय द लेक्चर्स यू ऑल टूमोरो अंटिल देन सी यू बाय अंटिल नेक्स्ट वीडियो बाय